Hello my friends, there's just a crazy amount of AI news going on right now. So I'm gonna show you the best stuff I found on Twitter. Follow me there to get these updates every day much sooner. The first thing of course I want to show you is actually on YouTube. It's from Matteo and his channel Latent Vision where he's showing you the newest face AI technology where you can use a photo input of a single photo and create really amazing results. He's gonna show you how how to do that in ConfUI, including a link to his workflow. So absolutely check out that video. Everything I show you here today is linked below my video. The next thing I want to suggest to you is to follow Ports XYC on Twitter because he does some really stunning experiments with video AI. He also does a live stream where he shows his findings. I'm going to be a guest on his live stream sometime soon. So this is a really good source of learning about about video AI. Next we have Martin Nebelong who does this amazing experiment down here with Lensco AI. Look at that. This uses an input of a figure and then renders different styles of them. And of course, as you can see here, it shows the figure from different positions rotating around that. You can also make an animation based on that. And this is something you can actually do over at the Lensco website who can apply styles to video, as you can see here with style transfer. So you can do some really cool stuff and AI video is becoming really big in 2024. Next, the question is where does the money go? And Linda Grasso has a very nice post here linking to a source that looks into where all of the funding is going. And that is actually a really good read to understand the landscape and the market, especially if you want to start your own business, if you're looking for seed investors, angel investors, venture capital and so on. This might be a good source to figure out what is funded the most, what are the most successful ideas right now on the market. Let's go to the next news here from Token Flow. This also looks really amazing. Look at the style here, how that is transferred from the video into a different style. There's of course also a research paper for that. It's called Token Flow Consistent Diffusion. You can see something that looks a lot nicer with the style transfer of, for example, here this kind of origami style on the bird. So when you mouse over, you see the original image. You have this kind of clay figure running here. That is very stunning. And of course, I'm a strong believer that AI is very much based on the input material and it's only a tool to create your artistic output. So this is a really good way to get there because you have full control over the composition and action inside of the video and then just render the content, the artistic expression on top of that. Let's go on to the next news. Leonardo AI has some really cool video here. Didn't even know they do that. And of course, you can check it out on their website. Website. Now this is not full on AI video. Instead, what this is, is what they call motion. And when you scroll down here, you can see some really, really stunning results with that. This is using image input and then animating that image. Because of the image input, it is not relying on the quality of AI rendering on its own. So that's pretty amazing. And as you can see here, when you click on motion, this is asking for an image input. You can select the motion strength and also if it's going to be private or public and you can generate this. Of course, this is a paid site, so you have to have some credits here to be able to run this. Next, we have another page that does image animation. It's called Pixverse. And as you can see here, it does some pretty cool tweening effect. And when you go on the website, you can also find some really stunning examples they have created on the Pixverse site, animating here, creating these AI video results. Really amazing, really mind blowing, especially the high resolution, the amazing detail and also the very nice and smooth animations. My mind is blown by this. Next, we have STMC, and this is actually pretty cool. When we go to the research page, you can see that you can use a text input to animate a 3D figure and 
you can actually fade between these different states of what the figure is supposed to be doing. Again, this could be super useful to use different AI technologies together for a video game, for a film, for a clip, for a meme, where you guide the AI as a director of what you want the AI actor to do and then render your own style and artistic vision over that pretty amazing potential in this technology. Next, we have another video. This is less AI related, but more VR. You can now port Nintendo 3DS games to the Meta Quest 3. It's of course not an official port, but you can do some pretty cool stuff with that. And personally, I would say the Quest 3 is one of the best VR environments because it is so open and there is so many sources out there that help you mod games to become actual VR experiences. Another thing to look into in this regard is UEVR. This is able to use almost any Unreal Engine video game and port it into an actual VR experience. You have control over how the VR is implemented and how you can use your hands. Check this out. This is a free mod for Unreal Engine games. Next, we have the Nerf Scan, and I'm really impressed by that. Again, this has huge potential. Let's check out the research page here. And one thing you can see right away here is that this can understand objects inside of the environment. You can click on them, and then you can click again to have finer details out of the object as sub-segmentation, so to speak. Again, this has huge potentials to be used in AI to enrich and enhance your experience of everyday life. Here we have something described as temporally stable 3D body mocap. The cool thing about this is when you look at the video you can see here, the body can be tracked by the AI even if it is occluded by objects in the foreground. So the AI can understand what the body is doing in the background without even seeing the body. That is very stunning. The next technology here is called Greg Nuba. It's similar to the multi-motion brush from Runway. So there's also a GitHub page where you have the notes that are necessary for that. When you scroll down here, you can see more information about that. And also here, how this is working with these motion indicators inside of the image. But when you go to the tweet, you can see that this animation here is much better. Although to be honest, when I look at the output, it looks a little bit like puppet warping. So it is the question if this is actually the same as runway or it's a different kind of technology of just pixel manipulation. Let's go to the next project here by Martin Nebelong. This is really impressive. What he's doing here is he has a 3D object and you can see on the left side, the quality of the 3D object is not high resolution, but he's using it as an input, even with the colors and the textures to render a different high resolution image based on the 3D model, based on the 3D position and getting some really amazing outputs. As you can see here, because he can manipulate in the 3D space also, not just the camera perspective, but also the lighting, the brightness, things like that, you can get a lot of different interesting cinematic outputs with a lot more detail in them. That's a really cool idea. Next, we have texture transfer, another really amazing concept. My mind is so blown on all the cool stuff that is happening right now. Let's have a look here at the research page of Texture Dreamer. And as you can see, what this is doing is that it takes a photo, looks at the textures and how they are applied to the object, and then trying to apply this to a 3D shape in the same way. Here we have some input images to show it from different perspectives. And then this is applied to a 3D model of a different chair in a similar fashion. That is really, really stunning that this is possible. The next news is about Korea AI, another amazing website where you can render in the cloud. And they are showing some pretty stunning potential here for photo bashing. I would say this is using LCM or SDXL Turbo to get these fast results. And you can just play around with your prompt with background removal, combining different objects together to create something completely new 
on the fly just by playing around just by staying into your artistic flow inside of your artistic vision i think that is the most important part about creating ai is that you can create with confidence in real time and of course you can try that out over on Korea. In other news, Zuckerberg is back in the AI game. He kind of pivoted a little bit or expanded, let's say his metaverse into the AI space and bought 600,000 H100 GPUs because he wants to train LAMA models, so LLM, large language models, make them open source to become a leader in the AI space and possibly also combine that with his vision for the metaverse. The more he invests, the more he expands, it can only be good for us because in the end of the day, we are the ones who get to experiment and play with all of these options and build the actual solutions for that and the actual product. So all of that is good for us. Of course, I'm also doing plenty of AI experimentation myself. So here we have another example of my upscaling workflow that you can download. I think this is coming actually from an improved version I'm going to upload in the next days. This is the result from the upscale. You can see how much more detail this has upscaling an old version of a mid-journey version 3 image very low resolution and then creating a new stunning image that's pretty mind-blowing and on top of that i also improved my landscape upscaling workflow again this version is not online yet i want to do some more testing and then i'm going to release that in the next days this is the mid-journey version 3 version and this, my friends, is the glorious upscale where we have much more detail in the landscape, beautiful clouds in the background. So you can really reimagine your older AI works with this upscaling reimagine workflow. Of course, as you might know, I'm still in Bangkok. The Chinese New Year is coming around. They always have crazy, beautiful decorations here, like this six-story high dragon, because the year of the dragon is coming around, my friends. And of course, as every day, I'm enjoying really tasty and very affordable street food, so I'm having a good time here in Bangkok. But let's go on to more of my experiments. So one thing that stable diffusion is actually not good at is to have high resolution effects for actual image manipulation so this is what i'm experimenting with another workflow that is coming out in recent days here i'm creating a glitch effect and then i am merging that onto a photo inside of comfui the photo has the full photo resolution it's not downscaled and that is the benefit of this workflow you can actually work with original photos and then have a full scale effect on top of that and here's one more of my experiments with stable diffusion workflows this is to create a pixelated version of an input image it's not a hundred percent there but i would say it's kind of fun to just have a pixelated version of any kind of photo you upload there you don't necessarily even need a prompt but you can give it some hints the pixelation could be a little bit better to look a little bit more retro but so far it's pretty nice again i'm going to upload that pretty soon so you can experiment with that yourself and i also created one of the chat gpt gpts that you can try out this is also about pixelation but what ChatGPT can't do is image to image rendering. So what this does is you can upload any kind of image. It will create a description of the image and then create a pixel retro style output, which looks pretty good, but it's not exactly the same as the input image. Here we have a very, very stunning video by Ricardo Silano. This is really artistic. So for everybody who says you can't This is really, really artistic. So for everybody who says you can't do art with AI, this proves you wrong. These flower-inspired alien insects are just 
absolutely beautiful to look at. Another research that is happening, and I guess a lot of you out there might be super happy about that, is this kind of deep blurring AI. The flow guided dynamic filtering. When we go down here, you can see the before and the after, very blurry, even pixelated video. And then the improved version is very nice and sharp and not pixelated at all. So that is pretty cool. One of the best examples here to have more details is actually this video where you can actually see the paintings on the left side a lot better. So let's pass this again. You can see blurry version, hard to see, sharp version. You can actually make out all of the details. Really beautiful. And another thing I'm working on is this Kawaii Pet Generator. This is sticking to a certain style. As you can see here, can create some really cute pets for you in this cute Kawaii style. This, however, is a workflow I have not released yet, but it's coming out soon. Check out my Twitter. Follow me to get all of these workflows as soon as I have published them. And last but not least, Google has announced Lumiere. That is their new video AI. I'm not sure when this is coming out because they already showed video AI in the past. But again, they show pretty stunning results here. This is a very nice effort. And I really hope that Google is making this public soon so we can experiment with that and create more stunning results and actually learn how to work with that, how to prompt with that to improve this further. And that's it for today, my friends. Lots of AI news. Let me know in the comments which of them interests you the most. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.